I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our data engineering playlist and we're gonna take a look at cross joins. Now, cross join notation has been around for a long time and it allows us to create the Cartesian product between two tables with every combination in, of rows in one table against all the combinations in another table. Now, cross joins can be used for a lot of different use cases, and we're gonna take a look at some of those today. Let's get to it. Interested in more cool topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, guys, this is a cool one today. Cross join is super interesting and very, very handy uh, for lots of use cases. So I'm using SQL Server today. This syntax will be very similar or exactly the same for most database uh, systems. And so I'm going to go in here and check out my fake manufacturing company database here. And you can see I've got some tables and I've got some memory in there and processors and storage. Uh, so let's check out those processors there. Uh, so we've got our processors. We have a couple of Intels and an AMD Ryzen in there. And we're going to have some storage as well. We'll assume that we have some storage available. We've got a 512 gig and then a terabyte and a four terabyte SSD. And uh, very simple, uh, we've, we've got these lists and we'd like to have the combination of everything with everything so that all of the combinations are available maybe we're making this into a list on a website or something like that and so that's what we're going to do so we're going to start a new query and i'm going to select processors from my processors table there or select processor from my processors table and i'll hit execute and you can see that gives us our list of processors now that's very simple and uh, and we were able to create that quite easily and I'm going to add an alias onto that just to make it nice and easy to to understand so we'll do uh, processors as PRC I'm not putting the as in there that's optional for this database system um, but now we can cross join memory which is the other table and I'll add an ali alias for that of MEM and so we'll do uh, mem.memory and now we've got a cross join between those two tables and if I execute it you can see that now we have every combination of every processor with every memory type and that is the Cartesian product and that is kind of the idea behind the cross join and uh, it makes it nice and easy for us to make those kind of queries and in fact, if we add another table, we can add another table. We can go cross join storage uh, STG. And that's going to give us the cross join with the storage options. And so now we have three lists that we're combining. And so every list has to have a combination with every other list with our processors, memory, and storage. And so that's going to be a much bigger list, as you can imagine. And here it is. So if I run this query, I get all of my processors, and it looks like I've got 12 rows per processor. Um, and so you can see the Intel i5 has got a whole bunch of a whole bunch of entries there, and our Intel i7 has got every you know every memory combination for every storage type, and and so on. And so you can see that. Uh, every combination has been created here, and that is exactly what we wanted to do with cross join. And so you can see here, you know, all of the Ryzen's are all sort of put together. Uh, they're sorted in this case. All of the i5s are sorted, uh, but we can change that if we want. We can add our order by clause, and we can put a our processor in there. So we could, you know, order by the processor and then by the memory and then by the storage. And that would be a different outcome. And so now you can see this, the processor is first ordered first and then the memory is ordered and then the storage is ordered. And you can add more tables if you have more 
options that need to go uh, into, say, your web page full of, you know, selections for users, um, this is very, very handy for that. And it sure beats trying to create this list manually, uh, which would, you know, take a little bit of brain power and you might have to write some code with loops or something like that. Um, but a cross join makes it nice and easy and that's exactly what we want to see for that. Now going back into the realm of ancient ways, there is actually another way that you can uh, write a cross join uh, that preceded the actual syntax that says cross join. And that was to simply put a comma between your tables in the from uh, clause of your statement there. And so you can see I can put uh, processors PRC comma memory MEM comma and storage STG. And this will be useful if your database system that you use does not support the cross join notation. And a notable example of that is Microsoft Access. So if you're running Microsoft Access, you will have to use the comma notation here instead of using the cross join notation in your SQL statements. However, most database systems today support the modern cross join notation. And so that's a really uh, neat way of looking at that. And of course, as you might expect, there are lots of neat and wonderful ways that people have used the cross join notation or just the Cartesian product notation in databases uh, and I'll show you one now and that is how to create a sequence uh, of numbers using a cross join as opposed to maybe using a loop or recursion or some other method or just manually creating some table. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to make a very small table uh, called numbers and we're going to insert into that table uh, 10 numbers and so uh, we'll do insert into numbers and we'll insert the values of 0 to 9 and what we can do is from that table maybe you made a temp table or something like that it doesn't have to be uh, you know a table that is persistent like this one uh, but what you can do is now that you have that table there you can use that with itself in in a Cartesian product in order to make a list of 0 to 99 and that might be useful for for your project. Now these days lots of databases actually have a sequence uh, function built in and those are very handy uh, but you might use this uh, for other purposes and so there you go so now we've inserted into our table the values of 0 to 9 and now we can use a cross join uh, to make a Cartesian product uh, that will give us, you know, 0 to 99 uh, so that we could join that, maybe join that into another query where we wanted to make sure that there was a row 0 to 99 regardless of if there was an ID matching that or something, you know, something like that. And so we can do select from numbers N1 cross join numbers N2. And so now we've got N1 and N2, and now we can use the output of that in order to sort of give us the numbers that we want to see in our query. So we could say N1.number times 10 uh, plus uh, N2.number. Uh, and so when it's a zero, of course, that'll be, you know, zero plus whatever the number is. So that'll be zero to nine. And if the number is greater than that number, then of course we'll get, you know, 10 times 1, 10 times 2, 10 times 3. And so we'll get this nice sort of output. And so we'll do n1.number times 10 plus n2.number as my sequence. And uh, and we can order also order this. So we'll say order by my sequence. So we want to go from 0 to 99. And, and we can, you know, run that one and see what we get. And so this is a good example of how a cross join can give you a nice sequence like that. And as you use it more and more, you'll discover that there are in fact a great number of uses for the Cartesian product used in a cross join, and that's what we like to see. And that is how you can use an SQL cross join with your database system. Need additional resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description.